In order to raise revenue, the federal government planned the tax amnesty program that allows tax delinquents to pay all owed tax without added financial penalty. However, economists projected that the federal government would collect a far lower percentage of total tax owed by delinquents than did state governments implementing similar programs. Which of the following, if true, would most contribute to an explanation of the economists' projections? The first thing we want to look at here is, the first thing that we want to look at here is what's the difference between federal versus state? And what difference does that make? Why would the federal government collect less revenue than does the state government? So it's about federal versus state and revenue. So this is the scope that we want to consider when we're looking at this question. Tax amnesty programs are only successful if they're widely publicized. This is definitely out of scope because we're not talking about the revenue collected. Most people who honestly pay their state tax are equally honest in paying their federal tax. Now, if anything, this is opposite what we're talking about. It might be within scope, but it's actually going against the statement. It would actually not contribute to an explanation, but, uh, but raise more questions. If people are honest about paying their state tax, then why would they not pay government tax if they are equally honest? So I'm going to mark that as opposite. C. Although federal tax delinquents usually must pay high financial penalties, the states require far lower financial penalties. This one, I'm going to put a question mark on for the moment. I don't really like the logic because that's trying to imply that financial penalties are going to strong arm people who owe delinquent tax into actually paying that tax. So that's an extra logical leap. That is the fact that penalties would imply payment. I don't think we can make that. So I'm not convinced about this yet. D, the state tax rate varies considerably from state to state, but the federal tax is levied according to laws which apply to citizens of all the states. This is presented as a fact. It may be true but it doesn't really change anything for us, which means it's definitely out of scope. So even if that were true, that would not tell us why the federal government is collecting a lower percentage of revenues and the state government is collecting a higher percentage of revenues relative to one another. So I'm gonna mark that out of scope. Now one last shot, E. Unlike most federal tax delinquents, most state tax delinquents fail to pay state tax because of an oversight rather than a decision not to pay. This one looks quite a bit more direct than C. So this gives a reasonable reason that they may have not paid. It's not that they've chosen not to pay, it's just that they forgot. So there's a, a much more likely chance that if you informed this person that they didn't make the payment, that they would actually just go ahead and make it. So ultimately, the logic of this is much more direct. If it's an oversight, they simply forgot, then if you inform them, they're very likely to actually make the payment. Whereas in C, we would have to assume that increasing the penalties would make people actually want to pay. And that seems a little bit strange, especially if you tell them that now they owe even more money if they've chosen not to pay in the first place, then telling them that they owe even more money is not likely to make them actually pay any of it. In fact, it's probably more likely in a lot of ways to make them never pay. So given that E is much more direct and C is indirect and potentially would encourage people never to pay, I'm going to go with E here as the correct answer.